He may be trying to unmute. Well, so Rick Dory, Present. Don Matisse, Present. Jim King. Yeah, this is Jim. Thank you, Jim. Aaron Chase is absent. Greg Stewart, absent. Betty Harris Howard is absent. Jimmy Wolf. Yeah. And Brett McCarthy. Here. Is four of us enough? Five of you. Jim's on. Oh, Jim. Okay. Four is enough. Yeah, four is enough, but you've got five. And you, if I don't believe you're voting on anything, but you'll want to appoint Brent if you, as a voting member. Brent, Only if. Yes. So if that's all right. Right. Yeah, if you, yeah. <laughs> so you just received those minutes tonight, so I would suggest that table until the next meeting, at which time you'll have tonight's meet minutes, the minutes from the last meeting, and then I also discovered that March 27th weren't approved, so I'll have those for you as well. So you take an action on that? No. Okay. No. So we're tabling the minutes of May 8th until next meeting, we have a chance to read them? Mm-hmm. Okay. Next is the workshop. The workshop intended to look at the weather zone with us. And I'm going to ask Don to explain what the steps are for that. Anybody else going on? No. I'm sorry, he's unmuted, so that'll be easier for us to hear him and for him to participate. Okay. So in front of you, just so you know, you have the agenda, you have um, the minutes that we'll save for next time, a copy of the bylaws that you adopted at the last meeting. So this is the official copy. They're also posted online. Then you have a copy of the, and we had looked at this once before, but it's regarding the um, manufactured housing, the state law. There are some changes that we need to ad adapt our ordinance to. Correct. And attached to that is the map that depicts the public sewer location. We'll want to look at that in conjunction with when we get to that. And then you should have an 11 by 17 copy of they're currently being reviewed by the public zoning map. So this is not this has not been adopted yet, but this is that one that you all asked to be posted. And nobody said anything about it yet. I I had someone call who's just moved here who was asking about the existing zoning map. She didn't have any concerns or you know she was just curious. So this is a half Correct. That's the PDF, and then there's the one the GIS one that you can zoom in and out and. Um, the the the, uh, the data from assessing is not connected to it yet, but it's still very helpful. So that's on our calendar. Correct. Yep. And then there are two other pieces of information to round it out, make it a big step. One of them is just a few pages that include. It starts on page 16 and it ends on page 20. And that is, I'd like to go over these um, piece by piece if we could, but this includes, I mentioned uh, in the agenda that we were gonna look at the table of uses in the bulk and space table, the dimensional requirements. So I'd like to go over, and none of this is for you to make decisions tonight, it's all discussion, especially since, yeah, yeah. Some of it we've touched on. And then there's one more piece of information and that is the or the definition section of the ordinance all in all draft not all of that is the thing is that what happened while you didn't get everything all at once is because and i think i told you this i worked on all of its changes and then i messed up the format yeah. so <laughs> that was a lot of fun so i couldn't get the whole thing back in time so now i just have these pieces and i'm i'm almost there and then i can have ed look at it and bring the whole thing to you so these are pieces of what's going on. So you'll see some, some of the things in here 
have not been vetted by Ed yet. So for instance, the Vulcan space table has setback changes and that's something you all looked at last year. And I took those from Ed's notes, but I need him to confirm that until you actually look at it, but they're shown on this, but we're not actually reviewing them tonight. So I'll, I'll highlight which ones are for consideration and which ones are later. So one thing we talked about last last week, I believe, was for the youth working on incorporating youth. That's in here now. So that means it's already in here for our review. Well, some things are flagged to discuss, but it's just at the beginning. There's there'll be a lot to do with it, or more to do with it, I should say. So it's just starting it. Uh, yes, I do. I made a mess. Uh, <laughs> I should have known that. One through ten is one through ten, right, Don? One is one through ten is the first one. One that is the sorry, approved. the bylaws, the approved bylaws. So, so that is for you to keep. That's yeah. just for your records. That's a handout. This correct is for our records. This one is for us for discussion tonight. Yeah. I'll number them next time. This one. Yeah. Okay. yeah. We're, we're putting that aside. That one is your Paul, your bylaw. So just okay. you can hold on to that. You would you adopted it um, formally. Okay. You have to so live and die by it now. Your bar board. Yes. <laughs> Yes. I didn't know they still said that. <laughs> so I mentioned this at a couple of previous meetings, um, more kind of in passing, but basically it's, it goes along with the state trying to create more housing. And so they've said currently, or up until recently, you could separate out mobile homes. The definition of mobile homes and manufactured homes was different, uh, but you could separate it out and you could disallow them different places in town. And what the state is saying is, mm-mm, Wherever you allow a single family residence, you have to allow a, a mobile home. And I, I may be using that terminology wrong. Steve corrected me earlier, and I, I'm gonna use it for tonight because I'm not certain. Um, so we have to change the table of uses to make sure that we allow these wherever we allow single family homes, which is pretty sim simple. And when we get to that table, I think we should just strike it, strike mobile homes as a use because wherever single family is, that is now considered a single family. So that's pretty simple. Um, but what I would like to poke around with tonight is revisiting the table of uses because you have areas that are designated allowed for mobile home parks and it's not everywhere in town. Now, the regulations say that they can only be where there's public sewer. So this is why I provided the sewer map. So in conjunction with you, oh, you know what? Let me turn off the fan. No, 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 no. <laughs> I think it's slow. Really? That's better. There you go. That's just like one of those hummers you have in the doctor's office. White noise. The drowns off. Oh, yeah. Oh. It's like it works the same way. You're just trying to drown me out? <laughs> yeah. You hear that. I oh, I love hearing the train. I, I love the train. I love that sound. And then if it's raining yeah. and you hear the train, I'm like, oh, I yeah. Hear it all oh, yeah. Go to sleep. I guess what we got to be now, go all electric. It's going to be all over. What are we going to listen to <laughs> anymore? Put, uh, devices on there to make the sounds. Yeah. Maybe we should go check out Bike Week and McCone and Holly to meet them. Yeah. So, um, to be clear, and you. Yes. you you elaborated on this oh, but to me, this is talking about manufactured housing versus mobile homes. The you have to look at them all the same. All of them. So when they say manufactured home, they're also talking about mobile homes. Correct. Okay. And that's that when works. I said the terminology, I think they're all manufactured homes and manufactured homes are looked at the same as stick built. The codes will be different, but as far as zoning goes. They're all the same. So what, what has to be on sewer and water? A mobile home park. Oh, a park. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. So let me uh, let me uh, open the... Do you guys have your zoning ordinance with you tonight? Um, and because I mean, I have it up here. We can go back and forth. It's just that it's, this one's marked up. So on page 28, I'll just scroll up here. So on page 28, 
Yeah. Yeah, let's just do that. I'm not looking at the same thing. Okay. So this is what you have for specific requirements around mobile home parks. So the category is mobile homes, but it speaks to individual mobile homes and then it speaks to parks. And the table of uses now looks at those separately and we're what well, the recommendation is, and we've gone past the table for now, but would be just to strike mobile home, individual mobile homes as a use, but mobile home parks is technically a subdivision. Um, so, and it is a separate use. It is required to be on, I just wanna see. see? Yeah. Thank you. Doesn't have to be on water. Yep. I think that's the one map I gave you, right? Not necessarily. No? There are some places that they they don't coincide. No? Not I mean, a lot. I figured there's places with water and no sewer. Yeah, there's not very many. Okay. So if you look at the zoning map, actually, let me see if I can, I'm adept enough to jump around. Okay, not bad. So up in here, you can see my mouse moving around. There is public sewer up in that area and it stops uh, right before, what is this road here? I'm having, uh, no, it, we just had an application for the solar. Yes. Uh, it's, uh, Carlton Pond. Yes, that's Carlton Pond Road. So this parcel right here is not um, on sewer and water. So it ends right in this, this area here. So looking at the colors up there, the general commercial is allowed, mobile homes are allowed with planning board approval. In limited commercial, which is the lighter pink, so in this area here, uh, this area here. Is that helpful or is it too scattered when I move it around? Okay. Um, there, it does not, we do not allow mobile home parks. Industrial, they're allowed. Village, they're allowed. The general residential, which is this peach color, they are not allowed. And in the rural district, which is all of the white, they are allowed the planning board approval. And they're always planning board approval required. It's a subdivision. So we can just make an assumption where they're permitted. It's by planning board. <laughs> um, so, and I don't have the ability to show a layer. It would be easy when we get the maps, um, all the layers together to show the sewer and the zoning right on one map. But, but we've got two to go back and forth. So what I would like you to entertain is just some discussion around, is it adequate the way it is? Do you wanna contemplate allowing them in other locations or restricting them in certain locations? Because there's a lot of conversation about housing and affordable housing and this is, this is an opportunity. So my only thought is, I don't like the idea of it being in that limited commercial area, right, as you drive through our town. Um, now, it still is allowed in the general commercial. So there is along this strip. So, so it's not allowed in the light pink. Mm -hmm. It is allowed in the dark pink. Okay. So it essentially follows 202. Yeah. And, well, and if, yeah, you're right, because a lot of it, yeah. And if manufactured homes are considered homes, why why would you even have a section on mobile well, home parks? Because a mobile home park, the people don't own, it's not a subdivision in the sense that you own the land. They're not individual lots. So you have one lot and all of the units are on there. So you're okay. not subdividing the land. 
but because but there's three or more units, it falls under the so, definition of subdivision in the state of Maine. So it's Maine. So it's one parcel with the multiple dwellings on it. It's different than if it was a single parcel and you're putting a one unit on it. But it has to have it's a development. Mm -hmm. So you could, you could, and so when you come to for subdivision, you could look at it. You could require amenities. You could require landscaping, street trees, different things like that under the subdivision review. So what that mobile home park looks like, everyone has something in their head as to what that looks like. It depends on what you all have for regulations. You can look at what you have. Is that adequate? Do you want to add more? Are you not interested in addressing this at all? And I understand that this, we're just starting this discussion. So, you know, I just want to plant some seeds and have you guys batted so around. We are allowed to limit mobile homes. We're just not allowed to limit mobile homes. Correct. Under old Correct. <clears throat> Hmm. Oh, do you see? I wish we could go back in time. Why did they say no? It's a limited commercial before, right? Like, I want to know why. What was was there a really good reason? I don't know. I've been poking through the files as I can, um, you know, because there are files as zoning amendments have come in, mm -hmm. and sometimes you, you just can't tell by looking at it. You have to make make some assumptions. And let me just double check myself about the parks. And I think there is one in that limited commercial. There is one right over back here next to Coppicey Stream. Yep, there's Little. one right off, uh, right past um, uh, DR Struck, top of the hill, just as you're starting to plateau going in towards Augusta. On the left-hand side, there's a mobile home park in there too. Just pack, pack by Caprera's. Sneaky. I'm pretty sure it's more. Oh, there you go. Yeah. I mean, I think they're very affordable for people that have no other options and they don't want to live. Oh, yeah. My you know, places are mobile. So, so now here's. I mean, we could always. My only concern, I don't like driving down the road and seeing anything really other than trees <laughs> because I'm weird. But so I just don't like seeing stuff. But. I mean, well, you could always do that. Quarters, you can require bumpers. Exactly. Yeah. So maybe then we just open it up to like wherever. I don't, unless you guys are as a reason not to. So what do you want to bumper shoot on? I, I just want you to have some discussion around it and then we'll take that information and come back with it okay. for a future meeting. But it is state law. So at a minimum, we have to, or need to, you guys to indicate or give me direction to strike the use from the table. Um, and it just goes under single family. And then the mobile home park will leave it as it is, unless you want to do something different with it. And I, and I don't imagine you know tonight. Yeah, let's see. So now, and if you look at these criteria, it speaks to a setback. So you'll see when I pull this up, some there's some little notes that I put in there and highlighted things so I wouldn't forget to look at. So it's not all going to be a clear underlined strikeout. It's a little muddy, but um, you can see where my thoughts are going. So this table we're working on a little bit. Are there any numbers here? Well, we need to. So one of the things that I want to um, bring up is that we do not have a column for uh, residential net residential density. We have the terms defined. Give me just one moment here. So I'm looking up here and I see 10 foot setback and she's 20 foot setback. One has to be a road setback, one the side setback. So there's the table that has setbacks, but for this use specific, these are the setbacks that apply. Okay, so the, no. And so I feel like a normal hot box and you're going this side of the wall and all the way back. So if you decide that you want to make changes to where they are located or disallowed, regardless, you could make changes to the design standards. And maybe these are exactly what you want, but there are other options if you'd like. And one of the things the state is saying is you can have design criteria for individual units, regardless if they're part of mobile home park. So on a single family lot or on a single lot, do you want to require that they have skirting or have a peak roof or different materials on the siding? There's um, the state saying you can do that if you want to. So these are options for you to contemplate before um, it comes back for another discussion. And then I would take any kind of sense that I have this evening and you know 
make modifications or do research accordingly. Yep, so you have you have addressed this in your ordinance. The state's saying, okay, wherever you said individual mobile home can go, get rid of that because they can go anywhere that you have a lot. You can have a single I don't know. That's black and white. That's not, there's no discretion there, okay. except that you can have design guidelines with that if you'd like to have that. Um, this here, I just felt it was an opportunity to revisit it. Even if it's just to say, no, we don't want to do anything. This is the current ordinance. We don't have that document. We do have this file. We do not have that document. You do not have this section. No, you don't. It is part of your ordinance, but there aren't any changes. That was just a note to myself. I highlighted something, you know. So, do you know? Is there anywhere in our ordinance that specifically restricts other than this area? I'm not sure what you mean by that. I'm sorry. Yeah, so if we look at the table of uses, we do currently, let me just jump back to that. I feel like half the ordinance is parking standards. There's so many. Um, okay, so mobile home parks down below. And see we're up on number 14 up here. We need to, in order to meet the requirements of the law, that needs to be struck. Because currently, there are two places that you don't allow them. Limited, com them limited commercial and village, which was interesting because you can have a mobile home park in the village, but you can't have a mobile home. So we were going to have to rectify that anyways. So now they're allowed to. Okay. On a, on a single lot where you can have a single family home, yeah. yes. Okay. So that's your attempt to answer this and that. Okay. Correct. And then the other piece is just, do you want to revisit this? So the, my comment down here where the parks are allowed, is is that correct? And I wonder what year they did what? adopt that. I don't know. Go through board on that or, oh, because no, it's on left. Yes. Oh, okay. correct. Okay. Hmm. I don't feel like something food for thought here because like i'm saying my first instinct is like fine just allow it wherever and just have you know buffer zones and whatnot but there could be something i'm missing and you want to make sure you time that because if you decide to make changes there's this whole pending application question right like we're going to make some changes and anything that comes in before you do that mm -hmm. is going to be under the current standard so if it is something that you decide that you want you just keep in mind that well, we're going to change it. We're going to allow it here. But if those standards aren't in place, it may not look like it looks like in your head until you do that. So let me repeat back to what I think you said. Mm -hmm. So 14 is on. We're proposing to eliminate 14 in response to this. Correct. Uh, I, I believe that we are required to, to do that. And then that eliminates our review. And then it goes up on the single family dwelling. Yep. It is considered a single family single dwelling. dwelling. Correct, because they he does the um, single family homes now. He does the permits, the building permits. So right. just like a stick built house, it's, we don't we won't differentiate it moving forward. So um, how do you account for things like uh, on slab, uh, screen, those kind of requirements that that is are in the home back, yep, but not, not I don't I doubt they're in the you know, I guess the question would be, would we want to put restrictions if somebody's buying their own land and buying their own local home? Are we going to ask them to skirt it? I think state, I think it's state law that they probably be on a on a slab. On a slab. I'm sure. I think that's so. So whatever that he's applying now, the state laws, those continue to apply. And then the question, the option is, do you want to go above and beyond life safety issues for aesthetic reasons? That's. What the state's calling out. Yes, they do. They do address that. In the, uh, 
So in that case, it would fall under the state and we wouldn't have to know it, I suppose? No, because Mark's gonna apply whatever current building code we're under. So pertaining to a slab, um, whatever life safety, he's gonna go by the current code that we've adopted. Which I can't remember what it is offhand. Yeah, I forgot about this too. It's just saying you can't so restrict based on that year. So, Take 14 right out of the table. And it moves up to 11. And the single family dwelling. And well, we won't change. It's just, it is a single family dwelling. So we won't change. We're saying the same thing. Yes. Now, once that happens, now the CEO is in charge of that review and approval and all that stuff. And the very specific in here as to what's required. Mm -hmm. And it's dealing with manufacturing, um, treating it very much like a single family, single family home as well. Um, yeah, so I know what this thing And it makes sense. Yes. Wait, so they can put technically, if someday we get sewer that runs through the rural zone, they could potentially buy like a 10 acre lot and then apply the subdivision for a mobile home park and build one in 10, 15 years down the line. Something changes with this sewer system at all? Potentially, but if you're monitoring your zoning, mm -hmm. you're going to change that accordingly depending on what the needs and what's the community. Okay. So right now, when you say the rural district is not going to happen right now because there's no capability for it most in, in any of the actual real rural areas. So yeah. as you go along, you, you look at your conference plan, you know, you do updates to that periodically. Mm -hmm. um, if there were changes to the water and sewer, I'm sure that you all would be looking at that. Yeah. Because you want and to then adjust. Like, then you adopt, you know, different standards so you don't have a one so I'll give you a hypothetical. Mm. I think it's 42 and a half acres, but there's a 42 and a half acre lot that runs from Memorial Drive up to Metcalf. Mm -hmm. And it, it abuts Maple Ridge. Um, it very least has sewer on Memorial Drive and water on Memorial Drive. Whether it's adequate size, I don't know. Is it this parcel in here, one of these big parcels? Yes. Okay. I, I'm saying I'm pretty sure it is. It, it has one lot down on the one lot punished down on to the uh, more drive. And then it comes up to Metcalf and pretty wide open. And then it, there is a house on it up there. Is that the one that's just got the one right away into it? It's kind of landlocked. Yeah. Well, it's got right away in both ends, Metcalf and or does in Memorial. Oh, you get to it. oh yeah, it's, it comes not right for, out on not for a road. I'm um, good for a road. It's just a house. Well, they own the house too, so yeah. they could conceivably put a road in there. Yeah, so they have to. I, I don't know the topography, but anyway, that's a hypothetical. I was just going to say, isn't it fairly steep in there? I haven't walked the property, but yeah, what's the cul de sac on the corner? <laughs> Um, and again, there's a question I'm outside of sewer and water. Mm -hmm. that. That's, that may be a lot that would be uh, available to do that for a mobile home pack. And keep in mind, to Jamie's observation, that developers, when the numbers make sense, will pay to extend the sewer and water. Yeah. So that's not uncommon. It, you know, just when the when the money works. But what's worth the sewer is a little bit of an animal and the model drive is all pumped. It's all what? All pumped. Oh well, pump stations. And I don't know what your capacity is. So well I did I did um talk to the superintendent of the water district a few weeks ago and he said there's adequate capacity. Because I keep hearing that there, you know, there are restrictions yet. They what? just replaced the pumps, didn't they? Do they I, actually do it yet? I don't think they do. We had to approve them get getting it because they got some sort of grant. Yeah, they just four pumps. Yeah. Anyway, we don't need to yeah. oh, detail it, but I'm just so if we like if so let's say this is part of the discussion. If you move forward and say, yeah, we want to consider this and this, we could always ask 
Wells is his last name. I apologize. Yeah. Dan, thank you. Um, we could ask him if he could come, maybe even via Zoom, and it, you know, if you want, if you have questions yeah. that you wanted to ask. Oh, that's a good idea. That's great. So you guys have those materials. If you think of things, other things that you'd like as you're considering this moving forward, just you know, shoot me an email or a phone call. And then whenever you're ready, if and when you want to bring it back up. I will say that I will, I would like to get the general sense of if you're okay with me moving forward with the taking the table of uses, taking the mobile home on it there, because I do think we were required to do that. Okay. okay. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. So we would we review that as a whole, as a whole we look at all the changes. Yeah, so you know, death by a thousand cuts. We don't want to every planning board meeting and council meeting, there's a public hearing on the zoning amendment. Right. Um, people then people stop paying attention. So I feel like some we've talked about some minor things and kind of set them aside for now. And when we have you know enough, we should go ahead and post public hearings for that and then move them to the council together. So this to me would be one of those things we'll set it aside with one of the ones that we said was um, you have to go to the zoning board before the planning board. So, you know, just some clarification, like I have some of those set aside that you've already touched on. So as we those accumulate, pardon me? Correct. I think you're all set, yeah. Okay, table of uses. So I just I'll make some observations. So this is outside of the shoreland zone because the state dictates what can be done inside the shoreland zone. So the, your table one is here. I'm sorry. Yes. So there's three tables. One is for inside the shoreland use is allowed. One is outside of the shoreland use is allowed. And then the third one is the um, dimensional requirements like setbacks. And see if I have an next one for me. Here. Just one right here. All right, which one are we? Uh, this huge one, okay. 18. All right, what are we looking at now? Sorry. I'm just going to make an observation because it's there. In the ordinance, we don't currently, when we list our, I'm sorry, my brain's just skipping on me. Where you have the abbreviations, we don't currently have the affordable housing overlay. We have it in the district, in the description of the, um, districts but we don't have it there and i put the groundwater protection because we've had discussion around that so again the, i'm not proposing these right now but they're things that are in play and when i talk to ed i'll come back with you with a more definitive recommendation you know or not so, so those are the overlays on our map correct that's yeah now the yeah need work all of this so you're on table one now? yep so we're in, uh table one i'm just gonna actually skip through because it's we're in, this is everything in the shoreland zone and the state dictates most of it. We're not, we're more restrictive on the state in the state in some of the fill and earth moving. So I've highlighted that um, to make sure that that is the intent. So that's not something for tonight. That's okay. just a note to myself. So table two, and we just talked about striking number 14. So over in there, I added a, a column for the overlay district for groundwater overlay if we head down that road to specifically call out that it's not permitted mineral extraction there because that's the ordinance you just created it is not permitted. So that would make the zoning ordinance consistent with that mineral extraction ordinance. I think also that we should make a reference to the ordinance here. So if you're looking up where is this allowed, you see mineral extraction, and then I'll put a reference out to the, if there's a separate ordinance for that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Does this seem like the appropriate location? 
Would you add that to the line? I was thinking, yeah, just after the after the term mineral extraction, yep. please see blah blah blah. And do you have that for marijuana as well? Actually, separate ordinance for that, correct? As well as solar down below. Solar mineral extraction towers and wind systems. So there's four I, I could add it to that would make sense. Yeah. Okay. We have solar well, there is no solar currently. So solar is not currently listed in the table of uses. So I'd like to add that then electric generation projects. So these are ordinances that we just referenced that um, and then my understanding is when I look at the ordinances, it appears that those uses are intended to be allowed anywhere in town as long as the standards can be met. I wanna be clear on that because we do need to update the table to include that. They're permitted, where they're permitted and where they're restricted. And I don't believe you restricted them anywhere. What's that? Is that uh, for wind energy, energy systems, solar, um, what did I say, towers, you know, cell towers. This one more, right? Oh, mineral extraction. See the highlighted yellow there? Those are not currently. Electric generation projects, I believe I went into the ordinance itself and took that out, but no. What is that? Wind? I believe so. You know what? I apologize because I don't have those ordinances in front of me. And that's, I can't confirm that. Boarding. I was going to ask about this. The boarding house, like boarding houses. So the living facilities. I was asked to look at some of the definitions. I do have some suggested definitions to include. Um, and I was asked by some members of the council to look into boarding houses. Um, and I looked into a few other things which I'll outline because we have this use that came to town recently, and everyone's like, "What? What is it? You know, is it allowed? Do we define it?" So. And we didn't have anything, so we had to let them. Is that what happened? No. Well, so I can go on because I just talked to the town attorney this morning on this. So they are going to be coming back to you. That particular use is going to be coming back to you. The planning board reviewed the Route 133. It's the um, ZIST house. Do, we all, do you guys know what that is? So the ZIST house, it used to be a nursing home on Route 133. And then it closed... And they came to the planning board, the owner came to the planning board and got permission to have some apartments and some short-term type housing where it was shared facilities. It's where this um, sober house is going to go into now. So there's some shared living facilities. It's different than... When did they come to the planning board with that? All I remember that was going to do apartments, but I never, never saw where it was ever been. Well, they, they came in and amended it and asked for a few more units. So it went to the planning board twice for residential use. And now this use has moved in. It's, it's, it's the same, it's a residential use is what they originally proposed. Um, shared living facilities. So there's, there's quite a few people living in there. Um, it's a, I apologize because I just went through all the definitions today. They want to have a, a sober house and there are other term, there's other terminology for it. So if it's I eight, if it's eight or fewer, the team and for the, totally the big different. farmhouse one we did, but Mark said that came in fairly recently. No, that one was over a year ago. Oh, well, to me that's really good. So. Uh, I, I don't remember coming back. I remember the first time he went to apartments in there. In one big a, shared facility as well. So the population that's moving in there are people who ha are in recovery mm -hmm. and it's all peer support. This is what was initially proposed when this got brought up and I was asked to look into it from a zoning perspective. Did it need to go back to the planning board? Is it permitted use? So, it, you know, we asked them for more information and I got the information and I talked to the town attorney today and it, it appears to me and the code enforcement officer and the attorney agreed on our current ordinance, let's go to definitions. So this, so you see I've highlighted low impact commercial, medium impact, high impact. So if we go to the definition section, yes, that was, you have that two different documents. And I know it'll be easier when it's all, at, all in one. Cool. 
<laughs> okay, so what I had to do, when, you know, like anything that comes in, you look at what is it they're doing and how does it fit into the ordinance. So they, what they've proposed for services, there seems to be an agreement by staff that it falls under nursing and conval convalescent home. So that is a low impact use and that is permitted in the district in which it's located with planning board approval. So it is, it is a different use than what was previously approved. So it does require a conditional use permit. So they'll need to come in and get that approval from you all. And the reason I had these highlighted was just because in my opinion, and I checked with our attorney too, we really should be spelling out specific uses. And I think I mentioned this, it's a permissive ordinance. So if you don't list it as specifically permitted, it's prohibited. So when you have these general standards, something could come in and slide in, you may or may not, it could be unintended consequences. So, so it calls out specifically in your retail sales with certain square footage. Um, it calls out some different things. And I think that you should pull out those and put them in the table of uses. Okay, we intended to have retail. We intended to have this, this, this. Um, and then strike those, in my opinion. We're Pardon me? We're probably yeah. Well, yeah. And there's always board, unintended consequences. No, that's a, that's a spelling error. I think there's quite a few in here. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm sure. I'm not sure what, what we're, we're supposed to be in the open. Of the. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Yes. Based on the current ordinances, because it within those ordinances, so what was the one I was looking at today? Maybe it was the wind one. It breaks it out. Certain ones can be approved by the CEO. Others have to be approved by the planning board. So what I'd have to do is just break that from the ordinance out into the table and reference the ordinance. Correct. Sometimes that is tedious, but it makes it easier later if stuff comes to you. Yeah. So, okay. So where do you want to go next? We have a list of all the different ordinances we have. Well, I I put to get yes, I do. There is one online, but the last time I used that, it turned out there was one I didn't know about. <laughs> so I've created a um, table of contents for. We talked about having a manual for the planning board new members and what would be in it comprehensive plan, zoning ordinance, and then any land use ordinance that's not part of zoning, but I'd also eventually like to incorporate them into the land use ordinance so there's so it's clear. Yeah. yeah. But if we are able to get some funding and get the ordinance codified and put online, it would be so much easier for for the public, for everybody. Yeah. So we looked at, so so the concept of low, medium, high, does that make sense to everyone? Do you feel like you would like to go in a direction where you glean things out and call them out more specifically, or do you feel comfortable? We have pieces in place that we like to just evaluate this, them as they come in. I mean, it has it's worked so far. So someone might say, if it ain't broke, I, I would say that the more development that comes this way, it may break. I guess the bottom line is control. If we have the ability to control it, and that makes sense, and, and it doesn't get away from us. Um, yeah, I'm all of that. So then I will, I will start adding uses to this table, yep. and eventually. Are we okay with that? I think so. Well, I think we need to see it. it needs to evolve to see it. Yeah. I, I'm a little confused and a little concerned that we're, we've got our hands in 20 different pots and we keep adding to the pots without many, taking many something pots. else off the stove that we finished. Um, 
and maybe that's just my coming in and kind of no, you're you right. Being, but but it seems we keep biting off more than, and we're not swallowing. You know what I mean? Well, unfortunately, I think we're always putting out fires. <laughs> unfortunately, we've gotten to the core. The core is our audience. Mm -hmm. What we're trying to do is, is document and put on paper and make rules what it is we've been talking about for months and months and months. And that's the part I've been missing is it, it's been talking right. for months and months and months. Apparently, so. yeah. And and. So both, I'm trying to manage as your as your chairman. Don's trying to manage as your plan. How we get that all down on paper and documented and approved by the council? Absolutely, we're on the same page. I'm I'm just concerned that she's got so much. We continue to put so much more on her plate that you get to. Um, uh, my sense she is that she's putting it on her own plate. And, it's more organized. To deal with it. okay. Okay. It's more organized in my head than it's coming out because it's all moving along like this. Right. It feels like it's you know, but it, in my mind, you have a plan. I have a plan, okay. and if it gets slashed, if it plan. doesn't appear to be Absolutely. working at any point, pull the plug. But I feel like, no, I think these are all valid things. I think the mobile home park. We have to talk about that. I think the sober houses and definitions. We have to talk about that because it's becoming. An right. issue that the people of the town are really upset about right now. If you're on any Facebook, yeah. they are livid about it. Um, so, and unfortunately, we got to stay ahead. We have to stay ahead of it, and also being fair because you do need sober houses. You want people to be sober. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. You don't want it to affect the rest of the town negatively, though. Right. The worst thing we could do is let it let it fester and not bring it right. to the forefront. Try to do. My opinion. I think we've gotten a lot done. Look, we got this done. We've got the, the, the okay. mineral yeah. ordinance done. I mean, I take one table. This is a table right here. Mm. I came on like like you did, but I, I've only been on since I think June, May and June. And my sense is this is a priority that people have been here before us. And so I want to make sure we do it justice and keep it moving. I, I'm not I happy don't with disagree. this. I'm not happy with this. I made that clear from when we started we this. <laughs> but uh, I think it needs more wait forever, conversation. Keep on plugging at it. And if I didn't ruin the format, Ed and I would have reviewed this, and you wouldn't feel so piecemeal right now. So I, I think that you'll feel better once I talk to Ed and move it together more as much as. And, and and again. I, not that it's piecemeal, but I'm also thinking back to the comprehensive plan and the 50 things on there that the planning board's got to attack. And it's like, when do we start, you know, jumping in and getting our teeth into things? But I, but I respected, you know, the work that people put in before me, and I'm, I'll go with the flow. Absolutely. I mean, there's cleanup constant stuff, right? And then there's the stuff that's more in concept that you have to boil down. Right. And they're parallel traps. My my I thought for this for this chart is we are, there's three planning board members that are no longer on the board from when we started these conversations. So I think it would be a good idea to have the conversation again about the setbacks and the, the minimum lot sizes with all the current new members. And I think that's possible. That's what we're trying to get to on the table. That's yeah. what we're trying to get to. And to me, I'm a visual learner. I have to see it on the table. And I have to relate to it in the real world, and then I can. No, I agree. This I is, can help support it. This is much better to but see we it this way. Here a month ago. Yeah. Good. Oh, I'm so frustrated. I have an old copy like this. So oh, you do. Somewhere, yeah. Well, that's what Ed had. It. Yeah. She got. Yeah. I had a physical copy, but I had to make the changes. Because the ordinance has changed since then, so that's what, yeah. Gotcha. That's the other thing is, is what Don and I try to do is, is take advantage of those folks that are disappearing, like Ed. Mm. Because that was one of his things he committed to as he left, was yeah. to help us with that. Yeah. So yeah. while it's fresh in his mind, uh, you know, I, I think it behooves us to get it done. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I think we just got to be able to patient. We're going we're gonna to be looking at the piece. You're going to be. Right. Do you think it's going to be too confusing? The way no. that, that way? No, mm -hmm. okay. I think doing it this way is fine. Okay. Yeah. I'm not sure where it's going to all tie together, but that's 
I, I, I have it. Yeah. I'm not concerned I have so, it. But if, if it gets to the point where it's confusing, it's not working no, for you, let no, me know. No. We're just we're getting a lot more done. We're never done. We didn't, before, we had taken one of these at a time, and taken six months to do each one. I don't know how you guys did all the planning you did without a staff we person. Did. I mean, that's just it. I don't know. We There's a lot that, that was done. Do all what you're doing. I mean, I guess we did it. We the book of life. Yeah, able to. You have more. Yep, I feel clear. More that in front of us. Table three. What do you want to do with table two? Um, can I no. just go back to table two for a moment? Okay. And I had a question on lines four and five. Earth moving, it seems to me like those could be combined. So anything greater than 10 cubic yards All the same. Yeah. would go to the CEO. Yeah. Okay. I think that makes sense. You strike one of them and make the other one. Just 10, 10 plus. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's that way because in the within the shoreland zone, it's yeah. called out separately, but it doesn't need to be here. Okay. Yeah, that, that's right. This does not apply to the shore. No. No, it has its own. So, where do people that want to find the information for this shore? There's a separate table, which we are not looking at. So, if you go back to table oh, one, okay. yeah. and you can see I, I highlighted in gray, I flagged that. Oh, okay, here we go. Because when I was looking at one, I was trying to figure out why it was that way. We are more restrictive than the yeah, state on right. this. Yeah. This is strictly Yep. Got it. All right. Everybody okay with that? I'm sorry, that's one problem. Combine those two. Yeah. And as far as adding those particular things, I feel um, clear on that. Community living facility, I have a definition for that, and that is the eight or less. That is what is referred to as a, so a sober house, can be, can fall under that definition. Um, and it has to, by law, because you can't discriminate, be looked at as a single family use. So I put a definition, suggested definition there, it's based on the state statute. Um, and that would just be wherever res single family residence is allowed. So even if it's a group of peers and they're supporting each other, it's not a family, you know, as you typically think, it, it's still looked at as single family. So we just need to make sure that that's allowed and clear. Eight or less. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. So those are licensed by the state. They are. DHS. Licensed by the state, and it can be. It could be a foster home. It could be anyone. It's American Dis Disabilities Act, so it's any disability, in which a substance abuse is considered a disability. So it's to it's to protect people from being discriminated against. So we'll make sure we meet that. So then um, also, I just mentioned this in passing, but so again, Ed did not look at any of this. You can see my comment on here. So we don't have a net residential density column. So I'd like to add that we have length. So you have, so I also, so here minimum lot size, I put minimum lot area because you have a definition of lot area and lot area excludes wetlands and right of ways, roads. So if you want, if you, Okay, so you want to create a lot, uh, it's got to be 40,000 square feet, which is it 40,000 square feet of wetland, or is it 40,000 square feet of developable area? So you have to have at least 40,000 square feet of land that it's developed. could be developed. Yep. So when you look at this table. But that's silly. Why? Well, that because it's, it can vary. It's what you put in the table is up to you. But the definition, oh, your definition. I think that makes it very complicated to have. It's already in there. It's just not represented. It's inconsistent. But that's not what we currently say. We say if your lot size is four acres, but you're you, good. But you define it. It's in conflict with what your definitions are. So it needs to be made consistent. So whatever that looks like, but usually you take out the undevelopable land. Really? I've never no? heard that either. I think that is making it very complicated. I mean, if that's the way of the world, but where's that at? I mean, that would, if you come in, Don, and say, I've got 
40,000 square feet, I'd say, well, show me your wetland delineation. You got to go out and pay for now or show me what you've got yeah. the wetlands on the property. You got to come up with more. Right. Yeah. yeah. Minimum lot size, size, smallest area. Of a lot no, of you're right. It's for the net residential density that you have to, you do have to call that out. So you're going to come in with 20 mobile homes on this parcel of land. Well, do you have that 3,000 square feet of developable land per unit, or is it all wetland? That's where it comes into gotcha. play. Okay. So it's not minimum lot. I'll, I'll double check on that, make sure it's consistent. Okay. If something was inconsistent, and we also did not have net residential development in our table, net residential density. So I will make that consistent okay. and have a less stumbly response for you okay. at the next meeting. Will that also apply to the situation that you folks talked about a few weeks back with the old Unitel building that someone was looking to put residential? Yes, you. we should look at change. So the here's- is big enough for a bunch of people, but the parking lot is so small that- you can only have two or three cars. It was a minimum area land area. Yeah. Yeah. So adding the column, what I'm going to do is take from the text and put in the column what you currently have. And then I think you should look at changing some of those because, yeah. because it's not very, um, it's, the, it's not a great allowance in the village district for starters. So you might want to look at putting, allowing more. And all of your comp plan, your downtown plan, everything calls for that. So we'll get, we'll start getting things like. There's that, that one. That one as well. Yeah. yeah. Didn't we that? He wanted, he came in for 12 and I think he got seven. Oh, he well. couldn't have, because he didn't have the land area. But if you allowed more units per land area, if it's one unit per thousand square feet, as opposed to mm -hmm. one unit per 10,000 square feet, means you can have more units on the same size lot. You still have to have some more. They, they can't have a hundred percent coverage. They do have to have some that's, is that what you're saying? Open yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Gotta have, you know, parking is one thing, but you got to have open area for people. But... Well, right. maybe. From an environmental perspective, you want to look at the impervious coverage and treatment of stormwater, but in a city or, or a densely developed downtown, maybe you don't. That's the question for that's the board. Question. you got to have open area for people to upgrade. So technically, this is mm -hmm. stuff that could almost rule out Right now it speaks to impervious. I don't think it speaks to open space, okay. but I'll revisit that. Yeah. I don't know the answer right, to that. So I'm just saying, these are, these are work there. Yeah, so I don't want, he hasn't looked at this table since I okay. updated it. So well, he may look at it and go, oh no, no, that's wrong. So I don't want to represent that as. I'm pretty sure this is pretty accurate. This was a David project, a big David well, he project. Got it started, yeah. yeah. So what happened was Ed gave me to a change everything to instead of 80,000 to make the whole rural district one acre instead of two acre minimum and then change all the setbacks to the side Standard. and rears to 10 across the board mm -hmm. and then the street setback to 20. Which yep. I think that's fine, but I also 10 feet away from somebody's property line, I think it's awfully close. Yes. Kind of don't want somebody to put their shed that close to my property. So let me make sure that this represents the discussions you all had. Sorry. And then you can continue what you're going to do at the meeting because mm -hmm. I it, this may not be in keeping. I'm hopeful that it is, but I want to confirm yeah, that. Yeah, the, uh, we talked about this a few times. Um, sub number one, setbacks in public private ways. Mm -hmm. There was some discussion about, um, and we've had it on once, on uh, some back in public or private ways shall be measured from the edge of the public right of way or from the edge of the travel portion of the private way. Um, I think the private, private one is covered. It's the public one that we talked about a lot being from the edge of the the edge of the uh, road, right? Just like, just like the one that's on a private way. That's right. Because and, and that's what the, I, I believe you talked to Mark, but that's what the Mark, Mark right. the discussion. I, yeah, it's a discussion. I had to do it. Is yeah. one of our discussions where the right way is Right. And like so Memorial Drive. It's generally thirty-three off center, isn't it? 
uh, 32 feet off center? Well, it should be. But it's a 50 foot right away. It should be 25 feet to the right. Away. But it's not. Okay. That's what Don's saying. Okay. The uh -huh. cow wandered down through there. <laughs> so what you want to do is change it to the edge of the public road? Just like the private. Yeah. Gotcha. And mm -hmm. that, that's a settling down there, but it's a big deal. Right. If, if, I don't know what the number is, but we would save some significant number of appeals to the zoning board of appeals if indeed it wasn't 40 feet. Right. Hmm. Um, I use Memorial Drive as an example. I did a survey of that when I was when I was looking at my building relative to right away. And in my mind, if you look at a development, if you look at a neighborhood, rules are wrong word, but the standing within a given neighborhood is for that neighborhood. Um, I take Maple Ridge. There's a setback. That wouldn't be appropriate for Maple Ridge because of the housing and the type of belt development. The Morrow, the Morrow Drive, on the other hand, is a whole different uh, development. Mm -hmm. uh, it goes back a long time. And I assure you, there's a significant number of buildings that are in the right of way. What are you going to do about that? <laughs> Yeah, my front lawn, right away. Right. Oh, no. <laughs> out of my lawn, we're in the right lawn. Oh, okay. Um, so the point I'm making about that sub point one is um, I think something we need to deal with 20 feet setback in the road. You're not going to build anything in the right way. Right, right away, you can go that far. So. And that's significant. 20 yeah. feet is uh, yeah. Yeah. from the edge of the road. Rather, it's private or public. That is significant. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, that's my two cents on that. So, so I would propose, less than that. <laughs> Don, I, I would give us an alternative to what that verbiage is, um, stating that. And then we can, as, as a board, we can decide if we want to approve it or not. But at least put it in front of us. If, so instead of saying measure from the edge of the public right away, it was measured from the edge of the pavement. Our travel road, which are the, do we have any dirt roads that are public? No, I don't think so. So be pavement. So we want to study this, Don, and see if we had another meeting to talk about, the, uh, Jim talks about the, the details. So you want me to give you some language, some more language based on this conversation so that you can continue this discussion. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, yep, I got that. So we're talking about another workshop that will move it along further. We take this import, import and, and incorporate. Yes, and today was a deadline for the next planning board meeting and I was expecting a couple things to come in that didn't come in. So right now, all I received was one sketch discussion. It's for uh, they want to put a new house. It's in the Shoreline District. The house is going to be outside of the 100 feet. However, they want to put a daylight basement, which would be right up against the 100 feet and would require them to do some cutting of vegetation, some grading, and then replanting all within the 100 feet. So they don't want to design that, come in with an application and have you guys go. Mm -hmm. So they want to come in and have a discussion before they go oh, any further with that. Uh, yeah, Elliot Thayer is the one who's. Is yep. And that right now, that's all that I have so besides this we stuff. Would, we would do a design motion completion of application. Uh, we would have public input. There. You don't have to have public input. I, I feel it's a, it's a good time to flush out any issues. So. Our standard of the date, it's a new standard, our standard of the date is. Oh, yeah, I think okay. that's so. Yeah, and then at the conclusion, just make make sure you're both on the same page that the applicant's clear when they leave what you what you would like to see. So be no action. Or not. No action. So that means that we're going to have time to revisit yep. these cases. So another workshop. Yes, please. Working out surprising this time. Right. right? Yeah. I know. I think everybody's busy. They're like work. Not doing those renovations uh, right now. <laughs> well, they're also getting ahead of the game in the winter because by the time spring, we can't get a contract. Yeah. 
So I can think of one right now that if we approve back in November, December, they're just breaking ground. They just they're just able to break down because yeah. of no posting roads, rain, yeah. and so on and so on. And it backs up. I mean, you can't dig a hole here, you can't dig a hole here. Absolutely. You go yeah. with a hole you dig. Yeah, I gotta tell you, the roads being posted made me so mad this year. We ordered a new um I don't know, a furnace thing or hot water heat. I don't know what the heck it is. My husband ordered it. They couldn't deliver it to our house because the roads were posted because mm. it was too oh, heavy. It was, it was called a big truck where we, it was going to come delivered, right? Oh, mm. So my husband's like, oh, I'm just going to have to have him deliver it to my work and I'll bring it home in my, my pickup truck, right? <laughs> Can I tell you the day that they were going to deliver it? I was like, but the roads aren't posted. We just got an email. And it was, the thing was already on the way to my husband's work. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> All this time. Yeah. What talk about the timing. Got they did. They broke up. They said it was going to go May 15th or something. Wow. But they cut it short. So. Hey, John, next. Yep. I'm just scrolling through. Um, most of this is all stuff that um, I'm going over with Ed, and I'm getting down to the definitions. Give me just one moment. I think the next thing. Go back. Oh, don't look. You're going to get nauseous. I'm going fast. Okay. Definitions. Just a quick okay. question. You talked about sober house. Is that going to be in the definitions? That's what you're putting? That's what okay. I'm going to propose. Yeah. As a use. It's always well, something that pops over. up out of nowhere. Like, is so, it once a year this happens? <laughs> like something okay. new pops up that we have to have a new ordinance for. Well, yeah, uh, she's mm -hmm. always one thing for sure is change. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's yeah. <laughs> like change. You can't accept change. You can't accept change, not every day. <laughs> All right, wait, what page you on? Um, so you have your definition section. So I'm just in the zoning ordinance. I printed. Oh. To, you, we should be looking at the same thing. The first page of your right. definition should be here. And I had just mucked around with that's that language I put in and this struck out. So, okay, so in the definitions, what, what you'll see here is that I've taken the land use ordinances like the marijuana facility and the towers and the solar, and I've taken all of those definitions and copied them into this ordinance because we wanna make sure that they're not inconsistent. Like sometimes you have conflicting definitions. Um, so they're have them all in one place. And you know, I had said before, eventually gravitating all of the pieces of those ordinances into the zoning ordinance. But in the interim, at least making sure there's no conflict amongst definitions. And so where you see in red, so MJ means marijuana. Some, a lot of these like here, this one abandoned, that comes from the solar ordinance. So these are not new definitions. They're showing up as new to the zoning ordinance, but you've already created them in another ordinance. They exist. So these are just copy paste. Correct. So uh, let's see, solar ordinance, marijuana ordinance. So all of these so far, there's some from the cell tower, cell tower, groundwater. Okay, so boarding house, that could potentially be a new definition. And um, I was asked by um, at least one member of the council and the town manager to look into boarding houses as a, as a potential use when this came up that people were like, what is this? What does it fall under? So we have a definition of boarding house. And it's you see that it, it was stuck into the use table, but it didn't say where it was allowed yet, because this is something for discussion if you want to. What did we, we looked at an ordinance when the old, uh, what's the name of that room? Stuck, start, start, I think it was Star 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 Yeah, that one. <laughs> um, they had a recovery group there at the large old farm and they were adding extra beds on. And we looked at something, gosh, we looked at an ordinance of some sort. From another town? No, ours. It was something in our ordinance that we looked at to say, oh, you're allowed to do this, this, and this. Do you remember what that was? I can ask more if you remember. I don't remember an ordinance. But I think it was back or whatever. Oh, man. You're talking about the rehab facility up on the end of the Yeah. The big, huge farmhouse, yeah. the big, yeah, beautiful the one. And then they there, have a they small. Renovate. Yeah. So, how did we go through a. Men. Yeah, I think it was all men. Yeah, I, I think they were adding that. Another building they were going to build. 
Okay, okay gotcha. Like, they we were referencing something somewhere in our ordinance, and I'll have to maybe poke through and see what it is. Yeah, it must have been in our existence. Yeah, it, it was, but I just want to make sure that we're not uh, Mark, Mark. He'll yeah, he will. Yeah. yeah. This is what is this the one you said was only like a year ago? maybe it was more i'm really bad with time okay, but it wasn't it like ago, right? no, no no i've only been on the board for maybe i don't actually know two years three years this is probably like a year i'll, I'll go look and, and, and see what it was because i just for us to compare like what did we use in the past to make decisions is that still good to make decisions in the future or where where are we missing something yeah i mean definitely see what we use yeah. yeah i'll find out but it's definitely you know less is more we don't want to put regulations in there just for regulation sake right, um right. whatever is the most easily readable less confusing um it was so rather easy what we did what we have they were allowed to do they were yeah. allowed to do more if they even wanted to and they said they didn't want to I think okay. so whatever just, we referenced i think we were just looking at our existing ordinance Well, see, now you have that, and low that was very moral zone. You have that low, medium, high impact. So, if it was considered commercial, you would have deemed it one of those meetings. I might even, so I had, I saved a whole bunch. I have like a whole filing cabinet. I could look back to it and see if Mark has a, a pretty sharp memory. Yeah. I'll ask him tomorrow. Yeah. So, if you could just contemplate. This use of boarding house, what you think of the definition, and if you want it to be something that's allowed in town, where what zones you might allow it, because you'd have to add the definition, you'd have to add it to the use table, and then if there's any um, performance standards around it, what would that, what would those look like? So if this is something to contemplate. You're straight out the word. Yeah, no, <laughs> I don't know what they say. No, I will if certainly. <laughs> Well, some things I looked at oh, other towns and I typed it and I typed real fast and just, yeah. Oh, okay. Like this one, like this one might come from Sanford. Sanford and Alfred both had ordinances that I gleaned some stuff from. I borrowed liberally. So then here we have cell tower, marijuana. So those are not new definitions. I highlighted. Um, Again, the low, medium, high for further contemplation. Okay, community living facility. This is, and I have a couple of different definitions here. We wouldn't include them all, but this speaks to uh, disability. This, this definition, after I looked into it more, there's a better definition than that. So I would say there's one, but when I get down further, I'm gonna recommend the second one. But so you so this is here. That's a, that would be a new definition. Marijuana, solar, wind, cell tower, cell That's tower. What I looked at earlier in the table of commercial attributes. Building compatibility with the That's important. Mm -hmm. It's in that table you should be fed on page four. Oh, really? Table read person. <clears throat> well, uh, that's that's a concept. Building compatibility. Chuck action. Yeah, you should map. If your zoning board gets a lot of variance required, it should be the exception, not the rule. So if you're getting slew of, you should map them. So if you see, oh, we're getting a lot of zoning. Yeah, yeah, we need to change the zoning potentially, right? So that's what you guys, yeah, it makes perfect sense. So this one was from groundwater. Solar, marijuana. There aren't very many new ones in here yet because depending on what you wanted to do with that table of uses, I would potentially um, suggest some more. These are all existing. Okay, mining of land. I apologize. Now I can't remember where I got that. I'm going to highlight that. I'll just set that aside. Solar. Mm -hmm. 
So Substance Abuse Recovery Center, I had started to look at that. The thing is that we don't want to define things just to define them. If we have something that it's under currently that this whole, like we don't want to duplicate things. So some of these, I'm just brainstorming still. If you highlight on the shut map, my page is being written to the shut map. The right. same definition is going to be that table that we just talked about. This one right here is? It says the nearest auto home, da, 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 and it says the nearest house structure set back from public and private way shall be measured from the edge of the public way. We can even change the one on the table. You're going to change that. And then we have a definition in the wind um, ordinance too. So somehow I, I want to term it such that there's it's differentiated what we're talking about. Right. Okay. All right. So we have to make. Yeah. You say we do have a wind ordinance. You do. Yeah. So. Yeah. I didn't know that either. So what, I what I, I've got this draft table of contents and what I want to do is give it to y'all and see if that if what you don't have. If you already have a zoning ordinance, I'm not going to print a whole other zoning ordinance for you, but I'd like you to have a copy of everything, especially like right now, right? If we're workshopping stuff, you can flip through it and mark it up. Um, when you're looking at things, you know, for development review, it's one thing because it's static, but when we're talking about changing it, I think it's good to have a hard copy. So I'll get you copies of all that. Yeah, that would be great. Okay. I don't know the day offhand of when that was created. The monopole. Oh. How means a monopole, lattice, guide structure that supports a wind turbine, monopole. Monopole. Uh, next to tower. Once you get on the line, yeah. on page 19, you go that way. Well, the definition's not here. Where you at? Uh, I just jumped to a different document because I didn't see the definition that I wanted to use. Let me just see if I didn't copy it. Okay. Community living facility we talked about. There was another one pertaining to... Okay. Yeah, I'm going to be my turn on the windmill for these. Wind energy system. Yeah, windmills are on the farm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The multi bladed, like a Dutch windmill. The wind energy system. Well, I guess I'm going to have to. Um... What are you stuck on? Uh, there was a, set, a definition I wanted to go over with you, but it's not in here. Um, it's it's pertaining to the community living arrangement, but I got it from another ordinance. I just have to. Okay. I, I didn't. So you're that. Did you? I thought I could have sworn I put it community in. Living arrangement. Yeah. What is it? It's on page four. Community living arrangement. I thought we went over that earlier. That sounded like a really short one. I had one that was more inclusive. It talked about how it had to be looked at as a single family use. Does that one say that? Uh, housing facility for eight or fewer persons with disabilities that are approved off by certified and licensed by the state community living arrangement may include a group home, foster home, or intermediate care facility deemed to be a single family use of property for the purposes of the zoning. How did I miss it three times? See, this one doesn't. Oh, see what I just did? I think I, yes. You edited your edits, didn't you? I, act, I took it out. Oh, I yeah. think I, I, you know, it's accept, reject changes. I must have rejected that change. So yeah, I have to so go back at two, it then. Okay. So what this does is the state says you can't discriminate. If it's eight or fewer, it's licensed. It has to be allowed wherever you have a single family home. 
So it doesn't have to go on the use table because it's single family, right? It's like mobile home, it's single family. But I feel like it should be defined because this is what happened with that facility that just came. And they were saying, oh, you can't discriminate. You have to look at it as this. Well, we, it was difficult. So I think we should have a definition of it. Um, and then maybe- No, I'm sorry, for a community um, living facility. Because it got really muddy just recently. And um, I think it would be helpful to have that in there and then make a statement. And I think it does say, look at a single family for zoning purposes. So then in the table of uses, you wouldn't have to list it separately because it is a, it right. is single family. Currently, the definition of family says five or five or two, I think. And we were advised by town council that you, you really shouldn't do that. You shouldn't put a number on it. Yeah, you can't say how many people are in a family. So defining family is, is sticky. Well, I mean, they provided housing on a Employer in another town. And what happened, it involved so multi families are living in the mobile home. They take the doors off, put the chickens in the doors, in the cabinets, lay the eggs, and whatnot. Well, the supplier of the home got, homes got into big trouble with the state housing lawsuits and all. So he closed them all down, they all moved to Lewis. Hmm. So what you're saying currently, we would allow that to happen. Well, here's the definition of family. I've highlighted it. But I would say based on the conversations I've had recently with town council, we should change it. And I don't, first of all, I don't know how you'd regulate it. Also, you know what, marriage licenses, marriage. adoption certificates, pardon me? Blood or marriage. Yeah. That's like you can't put blood in there. Like people adopt. It's probably very old definition. Yeah. 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 That's yeah, that's that's yeah, that needs to change. I guess what we're trying to say is if you do want to control it or manage it, whatever the right word is, then you have to define it. We haven't got a good definition. I mean, children are protected. Like you can't move into a mobile home. Literally, you can't with eight kids and put them all in one bedroom together. That's against DHS. So that That's, definition would be around not a room provided. Well, because it's different because then you can, say you have stepkids, you can't put a male child that's not blood related with a female child when they're not blood related. They're not allowed to share a room together. So that's another. There's all sorts of crazy stuff okay. like when it so comes to. That more state state state? State? Oh, yeah. But that's not huh? really. Where are those yeah. That's yeah. the state. That's, that's state. yeah, that's. Not something that we would say. Yeah, that's like child protective services to make sure that there's not anything inappropriate. But what if we approved it? Well, I don't think we ask. I, have we ever asked an application how many people are going to live in this house? No. That's we're not approving that. That's not for us to approve. We're approving the the land use and, how did they, how and the did earth they, moving. How did they get back to the state? To Somebody place? would have to report them. Yeah. So I guess my point is that's a, that's a small example of how it can get disrupted and out of control. Right. We're trying to find a huge facility with some type of service in it for certain people. And it, it is, we can have definition with it uh, as licensed, I believe, right? Yes. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so that would be. Yeah, so that's the state's involved with that one as well. So. Anyway, so that's that's what I had for definitions. I know that's a lot, but a lot of it is already existing. It's just being incorporated from existing ordinances. So it's really not I'm not asking you to consider a lot of new definitions. The new definitions really are around this this use that has come up that people are questioning, I guess. So in some cases you're create you've created wood here. In mm -hmm. some cases you start to plant a tree with branches on it, which is going to have to have more detail. 
we got both situations and what we need tonight. Um, is the board okay with this evolving as we were taking pieces and trying to make it into a whole? Are you okay with this process? And I know all of a sudden done, we want to see the total package before we approve it. But the workshops are about reviewing the pieces as we go. Yeah. So we see how they blend together and how they fit into the ordinance and what we're trying to do with them. And at some point, I think that the sun's going to come up and we're going to say, we're there and approve it. Does that make sense? I think so. So yeah. my goal, based on what you're saying, you all seem to be agreement. We had talked about this as to have Ed look at this document with me that incorporates all the work that you've done and what we're talking about now as you know, red line document, you know, all the little messy stuff in there that you can look at it all in one spot. So like for the next workshop, it should be all in one spot and inclusive of the work you've previously done. Does that sound like that would be the tool you need? It's in stages. So what I would guess is the things we discussed tonight mm -hmm. are going to be filled out and we're going to look at them in a different light. In other words, we've done that work and yeah, that makes sense. That's what we meant. Along with other board members. Mm -hmm. And I would assume somehow the other board members would get the package. Yeah, I will. So I'll take problem. those and make sure they get them. Okay. So, are we okay with that? Yeah. So, the next session will be a workshop plus a, a counseling session. Yeah. 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 Counseling session for someone with an application to, for them to run by us what they want to do and get feedback. So, they're, they're, the, the solar application that you had the concept discussion on, he we texted, not texted, we emailed as recent as yesterday, making sure he was going to have the right number of copies and, um, you know, what to submit for today. So I was quite surprised. And I went and lurked in the clerk's office and everything after 4.30 because I thought sometimes there's, you know, like a hockey stop in the parking lot because they want to get it in the door, but I didn't see anything. So hmm. if something came up in fair circumstances, I would consider that and, you know, possibly take that application. So, but that's the only other one that, but that would be the circumstance. So you could possibly have that, but I don't know why he would have missed it. I would suggest we do the review of application, the, the review of, of getting input from us, and then if there is another application, we get that done, and then we move on. That makes sense. That's good. Yeah. And the zoning map, the period time period will have gone oh, by. I'm sorry, yeah. So put that. We're going to approve. We need to put on a joint with program next year. That's what we said we do. Okay. And that's the visual map. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That we do. To me, before and then that gets kicked to town council yes. for them to approve. Yep. Yeah. And also, the comprehensive plan should be adopted before your next meeting, so I could make everyone a copy of that. Great. Yeah, copy. And uh, the ground water use what is is that an action item for the next meeting? That is on our radar for the next meeting. I've done a lot of the work. I will include that in the amendments that I'm working on with Ed, and I will get some more information. Based on the discussion we had with um, Mark, mm -hmm. I'm not familiar. Yeah, I'm not familiar enough with um, with the whole process of the licensing and what inspection we get annually. And I want to be more versed in what that status of the property is. Just to share with the board, the, one of the action items we had from last meeting was to talk to some individuals that might be aware of any issues with doing away with the ground water ordinance and incorporate into the ground. Our own. Right. And two of those were Mark and one and the other one Bill Mining at Congress. Yes, yes. Uh, we did that. Don and I did that the other day, and Mark joined us. And in both cases, they had no issue. Now, Mark did share with us that there's an annual, annual review by the federal government for that site. Okay. Um, it was a super fun site. And one of the main questions they asked him was, are there any permits for it? Use of that property for that site. Okay. And not quite a connection. So just to so you know, we did have a conversation. Okay. Um, That's good to know. And, and you were going to have a conversation with, with Ed. Yes. Uh, as well about that. As a. That, that mm -hmm. was made that incorporated. In and that site, is that, that's owned by the town? It's turned over after mediation? I so believe. I understand. I, and I want to make, I have a certain understanding and I want to make sure that what I'm thinking are actually facts, you know, because 
Mark told us that information, but I don't know what that report consists of, who it gets turned into. Right. You're talking, before. You're talking about who owns it. Who owns it? Are we actually issuing permits? Are we allowing people to lease the land for anything, or is it just going to be? Mark said he has not had any requests. That's what he told us. He mm-hmm. has asked for the federal government every year if we do have, if he does have an application. Right, right. Mm-hmm. I'm just wondering if at some point we want to advertise to somebody, the developer, say, and say, nobody knows they can do anything. Yeah. Look yeah. at this great it's piece of land. Yeah. <laughs> well, I did say that just happens the, to not uh, be used. Highway Department is using some aspects of it. Okay. That's a beautiful building. There's two beautiful buildings down there. I've hmm. never actually been there. And, uh, I haven't either. Ooh. When I looked at it several Field years trip, ago, let's go. <laughs> there was a lot of expensive equipment in there that they were using for re- remediating the water and finally the air. Okay. Whatever happened, can I ask, do we have, do you have a moment to share with me what happened there? I keep hearing super fun. What does, well, it was a landfill. It was a landfill. And there, and there were certain chemicals that ended up in that landfill from the manufacturing process. Hmm. And they had Is the landfill it. right on the water? Well, it's, it's on Anabestic Road. I don't know oh. how close it is to water. Okay. Yeah. But that wasn't far fetched to it's normal. 50 years ago. Yeah. yeah. You find some crazy stuff in your backyard, I mean, when you buy a new house. <laughs> you buy an old house. Yeah. Well, old I house. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Gone, we, many, many times. I appreciate patience because it was not ideal again for you to get the information tonight. But I really appreciate going through it like this. I feel like it was productive. Jim, anything for input? He's gone. Oh, gone. He got bored. <laughs> he because pro- he probably can't even read anything we're looking at. Uh, I don't yeah. blame him. You know, it's got to be frustrating. Well, he can read this stuff on the computer. No, because all no, the charts no, are probably not ADA. No, sure. Well, the zoning ordinance. That I don't know that that shows. No, it doesn't because um, it just says town of Winthrop. So I'll take a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. Second that, Don. Okay. Thank you all. Hey, Don. Yes. Ladies, officially, do you are you able to look back? Oh, okay. Are you able to look back? I think it was March. Last March, we approved a solar farm on Anabasa Cook Road. We did a height restriction. I'm pretty positive on those solar panels. So I have all the files around those because they can bind it. So there's, okay. there's a lot of them actually Kirk and I talked about mapping the locations. I, I have the files. Okay. You want to look and see what was approved for height? Height. Because I remember that they wanted to do like 20 foot yeah. ones. You remember oh, this? Yeah, they they they, they had to reduce that. Right. Do you see what they're building? I have I see this. They're huge. They're not 15, they look bigger than 20 feet tall. Across from the Chevy dealership? Yeah. How, how tall do you think those are? I just, I didn't even pay attention, I but I will. I drove down, uh, like going towards Jobs Farm. Question. That way. When are they ever going to start? Now They've started it. I went and I went, whoa. I was like, that's not, that can't yeah, be. Look, yeah, I'll look at the file. And, and I don't, don't want to be a. Mark, you still have to have whatever they submitted for an application for a building permit. Right. And they should be building. In accordance with that. Yeah, I just have a problem here. You know, I see a lot of things, but we're told it's not our job. I know, and my husband told me not to say anything, well, but I'm like, I just so specifically like those people, the poor neighbors were really upset about it. You can call me with so, stuff or email me with stuff and I'll follow mm-hmm. up. Yes. Yeah. Because you Thank take you. all the time to approve and put conditions on right. things. Right. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Not to be up. a Karen about it, but just yeah. I know how upset those people were of having it in their backyard. So we tried to be really careful about the buffers. That this is before we had the ordinance, the height restriction. You can't do the tilting, and then I drove by and I'm like, "Holy smokes, those are huge!" I think it was a height restriction. We wouldn't let them put in the tilting, whirly twirlies. They were high. Yeah, now, then I was questioning it. I was like, "Did we just tell them they, they couldn't they were do only that?" Put in the right. Set ones, but I don't know if it's. But the purpose of us doing that is because yeah. we didn't want we the twenty foot. The yeah. 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 I don't know what happened if somehow they. Does anybody else monitor the Facebook page for the traffic? I'm on there. Yeah. I, I removed myself. Day, everybody's pretty happy about the audience. 
and uh, they were congratulating Gail uh, as they should. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, somebody brought Gail had mentioned that we need to look at other things, like we need to have drive or something. Of course. Like that. And Are we done recording? Somebody said, well, we need a solar ordinance. <laughs> <laughs>